Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at a junk journal layout and it's inspired by Inky Quill. So this is a beautiful junk journal that I got from Kerry who handmade it all. It's just fabulous with all these brilliant papers in it. And I've been thinking for a while that I want to incorporate some photos into what I'm doing to actually sort of create more of a journal. Not doing it chronologically just as photos come up that I really like having somewhere nice to keep them. So I suppose combining art journaling and a bit of scrapbooking. So this is where this layout's coming from. I thought this this book would be perfect for it because it's got all these beautiful backgrounds in it that I don't need to worry about and I can just go for it. So I'm starting off on this uh, sheet music page and I'm using some mushy pea and periwinkle blue dilutions paint. And then just adding in some white, just to mute down the colours somewhat. I, to be honest, wasn't sure why I was choosing those colours. And then I realised that um, one of the embellishment pieces that I had to use on this page had these colours on it. So I think that's where my inspiration came. I'm using this stencil from uh, Stencil Girl uh, to just rub off some of the excess paint to get a bit of an impression. I was a little bit vigorous with uh, pulling off the stencil, it sort of stuck to it somewhat and when I pulled it off it came off through the binding but I wasn't too concerned about that, I was able to push it back down in. The other thing that I'm not too concerned about in this journal is you saw me putting the excess paint on the next page. Because it is a junk journal so to speak, I'm happy with putting some extra paint and stencils in in different pages just to already start them off. So, excuse the glare, but this is a picture that I'm using. This picture I took of me and my partner when we were first starting to go out and it's a picture that I've always loved. And it's been floating around in my studio, sort of sitting around and I haven't really done much with it. So I thought at least if I put it in my book somewhere, it's got a place to be. I watch a lot of the Inky Quill videos um, with Adele and I always get inspired by them. While my first love probably is not scrapbooking, I have done a lot in the past, uh, I enjoy watching some of them because I, I love watching how other people create and how they put things together and one of the things I really admire about Adele is the way that she can put together all the embellishments and clusters and bits and pieces so you get this finished piece. And that's what I'm doing here, just playing around with all these different embellishments that I had. And again, they were sent by the very kind Carrie. She sent me a huge big pack of all these embellishments. And they're things that I probably would never have used before or even looked at, but it was really lovely pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I really enjoyed doing it, having all these little bits and pieces to play with. So some of the things that Adele uses a lot in her books uh, her scrapbooking is obviously paint in the background. She likes to do sort of mixed media type stuff. Um, she uses a lot of doilies. She uses Project Life cards. Lots of really, really tiny embellishments. So those tiny little stars and hearts and so on. And she uses um, tissue paper to back a lot of her pictures. I was going to use tissue paper to do this, but I actually came across this um, scrap piece of tracing paper, which I shoved through my printer and printed out a scanned copy of one of my used up pages. You can see on the left hand side the just a piece of watercolour paper that I chuck into my journals and any excess paint or so on goes onto that and it dyes them up. But they come up with some really interesting patterns and, and colour combinations by the time they're all finished. So that's what I scan them into my computer, have them sitting there and then I can print them out on sticker paper or I can print them out on tissue um, tracing paper just to get some different effects. I also really like using text um, and that's a really personal thing to me. So Kerry again is amazing. She I, helps organise the, I think it's the Lifeline book fairs and gets lots and lots of books come through that she organises ready to, to sell. and. She asked me if there's any books that I would like and I did say if she had any foreign language books come through that I'd be really interested. So she found this beautiful um, French text. So I used that in the background. I like using foreign text because one of the things that we do naturally as humans 
is if text is readable, we will try and read it. And it's one of the reasons why when I journal, if I really don't want it to be read, I make sure it's really, really scribbly that I'm writing it as I go and I understand what I'm writing, but no one else can read it. Or if it's something that I want to write down, but I don't want someone to read, I'll hide the journaling. If you have it on the page and it's readable, people will try and read it. Um, and I've, I've learned that the hard way in the past, so that's why I tend to not do it. By having foreign languages and scribbly writing, you get that impression of text, but you're not going to sit there and try and, and your brain's not going to sit there and waste time trying to interpret it. So the, this is a uh, little die cut, which I really liked. And again, I'm just colouring it up with the mushy pea to bring in some of that green from the background because I, I found my photo cluster kind of covered over a lot of that green. So I wanted to bring some green back into the, the layout. I'm using lots of double-sided tape because I can and because it's in this journal um, and there's going to be lots of dimension and stuff, I just want to make sure it's really adhered to the page. The papers in this are all different thicknesses as well, so different adhesives are going to um, affect it in different ways. Now all I'm doing is just sort of going through and doing those final bits, adding in all the embellishments. So I'm using, for this one, this is a plastic tile and I'm using the red line of tape. It's a really, really strong um, double-sided adhesive. Um, it sticks anything. So I knew that that would stay on really firmly on the page. Uh, for the others, I'm just using sort of double-sided tape or some liquid glues. When I'm doing this and going back through again, and I was really, really glad that I'd sort of practiced beforehand on how I wanted Bits, the bits and pieces to look because it gave me a bit of a guide of where I was going to go and how I was going to glue things down. I could sort of rearrange them if I wanted to but I, I had a rough idea of where everything was going. So now I'm just working out where to glue down my wooden um, chipboard pieces, finding out a few others um, to add in. Now I'm trying to find my glue I think to make sure I'm going to glue it down. Basically, once this is finished, I'm also going to work out whether I was going to put some journaling on this page or not and sort of coming up with where I was going to put it and how I was going to write it. I didn't want to lose the background with the music notes in it, um, so I thought maybe having black, using a black pen might be a little bit too much. So I thought maybe I might go white pen. Um, but I was still really undecided with how I was going to do it or where I was going to do some journaling. To glue down the chipboard pieces or the wooden um, pieces, I'm just using some mixed media liquid glue. It goes on opaque, but it actually dries clear. I'm trying to be really careful not to have it smear out so you can't see it, but it worked fairly well with this. Then I've got a little tissue, clear tissue height that I thought I'd add on and put the, I can't remember what I was going to do next, there you go. I wrote something underneath it, I can't remember how I wrote it though. Ah, this is what I did. I didn't write it. I used stickers. There you go. It's funny, you can do a page and then completely forget what you've actually done on it. So these are the Tim Holtz stickers and it's not the snarky ones, it's the nice ones. Um, they're really, really handy to have. There's some beautiful quotes in it and lots of things that you can cut up. So I've got all you need. Together we we can take over the world, I think. And um, I love you. I love you is the other one. So I, this is pretty much it. I'm just getting a white pen. I decided in the end that I was going to get a white pen and do some journaling underneath. Again, it's fairly scribbly, um, but I didn't really mind if it was red or not. It is a bit of a soppy page. It's not my usual style, I have to say, but I enjoyed doing it. It was really relaxing and it was nice to use a photo that I love and actually have me in my journal for a change and my partner or my husband because um, we don't appear in my journals very often. My kids do um, and a lot of my artwork does, but it's very, very rare that I actually put a photo of myself or um, in my journal. And I think it's really important to 
to include us in it because we're a very important part of our lives. It's all about us in the end, really. So this is a close-up of the finished piece. It was really fun to do. I'm really thankful that Adele puts all her fabulous videos up there to inspire us. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.